Hello there, and happy Leap Day. This is D coming to you straight from Mesa, Arizona. How y'all doing today? Hoping your day's going smooth, your mind is a little calm, and you're taking it easy today. That would be great. You know, we got an extra day this year, and maybe that's something that we should take advantage of. It's a day we didn't have the last three years. So it's one more day, and a day maybe to do something different. You know, maybe that's what Leap Day is for. It's February 29th, coming to you on a Thursday. And um, I don't know, I recorded an episode before this one. I never know if they're good or if I'm going to keep them. I, I've been keeping all of them so far, and I'm going to hopefully stay on that trend. But just in case I don't, let me catch you up real quick. My wife and I drove down from Denver over a couple days, a little, little chaotic. Um, stopped the night, stopped the night in Santa Fe, drove on down to Mesa, Arizona. So we're down here now visiting her parents. And we are at an RV park that is dedicated to 55 plus. And just, there's 30, I just found out today, there's 3,800 pads or sites here between RVs and these stationary units that are kind of like small trailer homes, um, all in this complex. And then there's this whole recreation area where they can swim and um, play bocce ball and shuffleboard and paddle ball and tennis and all kinds of stuff and they have all kinds of activities it's a very active community and I think that's really impressive and um, and I realize you know it's it, this is an option we all have and, and, and they found they found their happiness their happiness down here and that that really got me thinking about a topic I thought I might want to do for this one um, I watched recently an old movie, um, I say old, I don't know where it came, when it was, but it was a while back. It was Hector and the Search for Happiness, and I think it was Simon Pegg that was in it. And it was, it was a fun movie. I liked it. Um, it didn't review very well, but hell, I never agree with reviews. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you. But in this, he came up with, like, I think 15 rules that he discovered on this journey. And it, he took this journey, he's a psychiatrist, and took a journey trying to uncover the rules of happiness, trying to uncover what happiness means. It's, it's, this, it's this eternal quest that so many of us have taken. I thought it might be interesting while I'm down here and looking at all the people around me and how they're spending the later years of their life, how people find happiness. So anyway, I thought an interesting topic for this episode just might be, what if I looked at those 15... I, I listed them down here, the 15 rules that he uncovered in the movie. Now, this is based on a book, and in the book there are far more rules. I'm just going with the 15 that were in the movie. This didn't rate very well. I know a lot of people didn't thought it was corny and overdone and sappy and all that kind of stuff, and that's probably why I liked it. Um, I like movies like that sometimes. And yes, there, were definitely room, there was definitely room for improvement on this film. This is not at all about the film. It's about these 15 rules. I'm not saying they're good, I'm not saying they're bad, but I thought, what if we touched on these real quick and just talked about each one for a few minutes and, and see if maybe one of them would make sense. Maybe one of them would cling. And don't forget, these aren't rules that he necessarily buys into or the character or the author of the book buys into, but they're, they're rules that he's seen other people living by. And that's really what this is about. And I think that's something interesting to, to pursue, to, to that, that quest. And I thought maybe for those of us who, you know, deal more on the anxious side, on more of the obsessive side, more on the overthinking side, as so many of us do, maybe this might be a fun exercise. So let's take a shot at this. So number one, the, number, the first rule from the movie was making comparisons can spoil your happiness. And I think this is one of those ones that um, all of us already kind of knew. And just so you know, I have not prepped or researched any of these, okay? I mean, I wrote the rules down, but I'm not prepared my, my answers. So these are going to be off the cuff, just off, the, you know, just my instant reactions. I just wanted to let you know that. So I didn't do any kind of research or background information on this. Um, so just wanted to give that. But uh, regarding comparisons, boy, that's that's a whole topic for an episode we're going to do later because I've done some research on this in the past and I would like to talk about it and how comparisons can 
destroy our lives if we let them. Um, it's amazing how comparing our lives to others can can destroy our happiness and eat away at us. It's it's that it's that oh your life needs to be better and always comparing it with somebody whose life you think is better. And God, we do that through you know Instagram filters and Facebook pages and jobs, you know, success and so many different er- areas in our life. And we are always finding these reasons why you know, our life isn't quite good enough and why we have to work harder or go a different direction or keep trying to seek a better life. Um, and comparisons can kill us. I think this is definitely those ones that um, I totally agree with. Making comparisons can spoil your happiness. Checklist, let's move on to number two. A lot of people think happiness is being rich or important. Okay, I would agree with that. A lot of people think that. Although, if you look at evidence, it's just it just does not support the assumption that being rich makes you happy. Most of the research I have seen actually shows that once basic necessities are met, meaning you have enough food, you have shelter, um, you're provided with you know those few basics, those things that you need to survive. Once those are met money really has no correlation to happiness so you can be extremely wealthy it doesn't mean you're going to be really happy and if you don't believe me just look at some wealthy people's lives look at some of the celebrities in hollywood look at some of the billionaires so many of them are still seeking something better and yet for you and me we're sitting here thinking you have a hundred times more money than i'll ever see and yet you're not happy how can you not be happy I think most of us should understand again that wealth, success really are not um, correlated with happiness. So something to keep in mind there. Number three, many people see happiness only in their future. Oh, I like this one. Many people see happiness only in their future. Okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to pace. I don't know why. Sometimes when I talk to you (laughs) and I get excited about topics, I like to pace. I am in this unit we rented here this little um um trailer or whatever and um just kind of walking around my wife's out with her folks right now and so i'm just doing this but okay so many people see happiness only in their future and i think this is where we lose a lot of happiness i know i did it's like always planning always trying to succeed chasing success boy that can just eat us up because we can spend our whole life chasing success and never realize that happiness is right there in front of us. It's in our hands. It's, it's just beyond that. T- it's like if you just turned around and looked. Happiness is right here. And it is. It can be in the simplest things. It can be in the sunrise. It can be petting your dog. It can be the smile on your child when she gets her first A. It can be just in the ease of the sunset as it's going down and the breeze kicking in and and blowing the palm trees as I'm looking out at palm trees. It's so cool to be looking out at palm trees. (laughs) Don't have these at home in Colorado. But so many simple things. For me, a walk in the morning. For me, having breakfast and playing some, you know, little games on our on our phones with my wife. We play hurdle and wordle and um, kind of have that, and just that little. These little things are happy moments. And if all you're focused on is chasing the big dream, whatever that is, whatever that thing is, you think you need to be so focused on, you're gonna miss out. I believe strongly on this one. It's a whole other topic we'll talk more about. But boy, you're gonna miss out. Number four. Happiness could be the freedom to love more than one woman at the same time. Okay, I didn't see that one coming. Um, That actually was from the movie where he was had his girlfriend back home and he was in love with her. And then there's another woman he met on the travels. This can open a whole bag of worms that I'm not getting into right now. (laughs) I can see where they're coming from that you can love more than one person. But I also think you need to be careful about being true to one person and trust and and you know for me i yeah i can love more than one person but i need to be faithful to one person and that's that's the, that's the path i've chosen 
I think from this standpoint, they're just looking at that you can, you can love more than one person in life, and there's so many people out there, and there's so much influence. I think it comes back to you and the promises you've made to yourself, the promises you've made to others, and developing trust with some of those relationships. That's the key in my mind is so much is, yeah, maybe you can love more than one woman, especially if they all know that's what you're doing and that's what you choose to do. I'm not judging here. For me, I've chosen to love one woman, but I still love others just in a different way. You can look at this so many ways and, oh, this could open up bag of worms and maybe, you know, I'm going to take all these and just do whole episodes on them because there's so much to talk about here. But you know what? Let's not do it now. Let's move on. Number five, sometimes happiness is not knowing the whole story. Oh, you know, it's funny because it's been a, a little bit since I saw the movie, so I'm only remembering pieces of it. But I do think that's an interesting topic is sometimes happiness is not knowing the whole story. It's not knowing all the things that went into something. It's just knowing parts of it. And I think this was related to what he discovered about this other woman that he became very enamored with, maybe loved, um, and to find out that she was actually a prostitute. She was being controlled, and she really wasn't her own person, and all the, all the under, underside of life that maybe we don't always see. And sometimes is happiness, sometimes not seeing the darkness, not seeing the reality of the world. And you know, that's a really good question. It's a really good question because sometimes, I mean, we could, if we only focused on the darkness and all the things that we think need to be changed and all the things that are out there going wrong, we're going to have a pretty miserable life. Now, maybe that's what, that's what you think you need to focus on, and maybe that's where some of the great changes of this world come from. But I also think you need to find a balance in your life, and you need to focus on some good because there is so much good in this world. Anybody who says the world is all bad or all good is so far off the mark. The world is both, and thank God it is. I'm not saying I want all this misery and, and suffering to go on with people, but that is, that is there, and that's what actually makes the good feel so good. And I think trying to change the world is a noble thing, to try to improve the lives of people who live in desperate circumstances. I get that. But you, if you live in that world all the time, your life is going to be affected by that world all the time. And you may not see all the good and the wonderful things that are going on. That's where I take that one. Okay, uh, let's go to number six. Avoiding unhappiness is not the road to happiness. Interesting. That's a good point because... So often we are trying to avoid unhappiness or avoid risk or avoid negative things in life and we're trying to do things to just to not mess with that. I do that all the time. I do it all the time. And I got to catch myself. I'm trying to avoid not even unhappiness. I'm trying to avoid suffering. I'm trying to avoid pain. I'm trying to avoid uncomfortable um, situations. I think so many of us with anxiety and with nervous system disorders like I have or, or the benzo stuff that I went through or people with OCD or people with you know, depression. We're, we're so worried about so many problems happening and we're so busy avoiding those situations that we forget to live. And we forget to have that happiness. We forget to have that, that good thing in life. We forget to cling to that and enjoy the good because we're so busy avoiding the bad. I think that's a good point. That's where I take that one. I'm not saying this is where the film went with each one. I'm just grabbing the rule and I'm running with it where I want to go. That's what this podcast is about right now. <laughs> so that's good. Number seven, does the person you're with bring you predominantly, bring you predominantly A, up or B, down? Does the person you're with most of your time, does that person lift you up? or take you down and oh I love my answer to this one because I can tell you right now I spend most of my time with my wife and she makes my life better period are there some things that she brings me down with of course there are but I'd say it's probably eight to two or nine to one 
heavily on the side of positive. I am blessed and I am lucky for that. And I know not everybody's in that situation. And I'm so sorry. So many people, so many of you are out there looking for that kind of person, that kind of relationship, that kind of place to be. And I get that and I feel for you. Because I've been there. I've been in that, that place. I've been blessed for the last 27 years to be married to the woman I love and to be committed to her and to enjoy that. And right now she's gave me some time to myself to just hang out here and went off to spend some time with her folks so I could just do my thing for a little while because she gets that. She knows that I need that. And I'm down here to spend time with her parents because I know she needs that. That's a relationship. <laughs> when did compromise become a bad word? Relationship is about giving in now and then for the other person. That's a relationship, and that's why we work. So I can tell you right now, the person I predominantly spend time with brings me up. But some of you are in that other situation, and you got to look back and think. You know, I, I mentioned in one of my episodes about being toxic. Are, are people really toxic? And that we can write off people too quickly, and I still believe that. I totally do. But at the same point, sometimes there are people in our lives that we are spending a lot of time with who bring us down most of the time. And maybe we need to rethink that. Maybe we need to rethink that. That's all I'm saying. I'm not giving you any instructions. Hell, as you know, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm nothing <laughs> as far as degree-wise. I'm just a guy who's here chatting with you on a podcast. That's all I am. <laughs> Let's go to number eight. Number eight, happiness. I'm, I didn't miss any, did I? Nope. I think I'm good. Number eight, happiness is answering your calling. Ooh, that's pretty good. Maybe this is my calling. Is this my calling? I don't know. Maybe this podcast is my calling. It's, it's my pulpit. No, I'm not a pulpit. I'm not a, I, I always thought maybe I was a preacher just without the religion. <laughs> I mean, I, ha I have a faith in a higher power. I, I do. It, it, it's confusing to me sometimes, you know, just to tell you. But I have this, I have this faith in, in a God. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know a lot of details. I'm very skeptical, so I'm always questioning it. But I still feel like there's... There's something out there. There's someone out there. But I've never been a person about the dogma of religion. I, d I don't never been one to really follow that closely. So I'm kind of all over the map in that regard. But as far as a calling goes, you know, I feel like talking is a calling. <laughs> and maybe that's where that preacher mindset kind of comes in. It's like, I'm a preacher without religion. I just love talking. I get passionate about this stuff. And I think it's so exciting to have these conversations with you. And I think for me, my calling is not preacher, but it's teacher. And I've always been that. And I love that. But not a teacher from, again, the person up on the pulpit. A teacher who's an equal student to everybody else in the classroom. Somebody who's maybe guiding the group a little bit, but is learning as much as they are. That's always been my passion. I've, I love that. So my question to you all is, where's your calling? What gives you that flow state? What gives you that state that you just feel so happy in and you're excited to do it just like I am right now? How many of you can find... That feeling I have, I just got to shiver up my spine as I said that because I love doing this. I am pacing around <laughs> in, this, in this small trailer in Mesa, Arizona, and I'm having a ball talking. And I don't even know if anybody will even listen to this. And I don't care. I mean, I care a little, but <laughs> it's okay. It's okay if nobody does because I love doing this. Where is that for you? And how can you find that? How can you find your call? Number nine, happiness is being loved for who you are. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one coming from somebody like myself and so many of you who have not been always our true selves all the time. In fact, maybe most of the time. I have to admit, I'm not always my true self. I've always been um, the person who's kind of morphing and trying to get along, and I've been the people pleaser. I've been the one who's trying to get people happy. I was first my mom all the time growing up. She, I had to make sure she was happy, and if not, things fell apart and it got ugly. And so many of us are like that, and we're not always sure of, you know, 
being who we are. And, uh, and if we are who we are, will people even like us? And I think it comes down to this. If you're not who you are, if you're not being your true self, then those people aren't really liking you. They're liking this persona. They're liking that Instagram filter. They're liking that, you know, story you told on Facebook that was only, you know, 50% true. They're not liking you. The only way to get that to happen is to show your true self. This podcast for me is another opportunity of that for me. This is me. This is me, even more than the Benzo Free podcast, which I did show a lot of myself in there, but there was still limitations and I was careful and it was in part. It was 80 to 90 percent me. Let's say 80 percent me. This is 95 percent me. That little 5 percent I hold back because there's things about my relationship with my wife and things about my home and detail like that that I will always keep to myself. But this is me and who I am. So the question for you is, are you being your true self and are you currently loved for who who you are? I have that blessing in my life. My wife knows almost everything about me, including all these failures and flaws. And she still loves me. That's a pretty cool thing. I'm hoping everyone else can find that, if you don't have it already. Number 10 is sweet potato stew. Um, that was the theme <laughs> of the movie. He was, when he arrived in Africa, there was a, a woman there that would, would invite him over some, some sweet potato stew. And he was so excited about it. Unfortunately, after that, it ended in tragedy and he got arrested. And I mean, not arrested, but thrown in a prison cell by um, some people. And it got ugly and beaten to death and almost died. But forget that part. <laughs> the sweet potato stew he loved. And it was just about getting together with some people that he'd never met before in Africa, this, this family and community that brought him in and fed him sweet potato stew. I don't even know if it was good. I've never had sweet potato stew, but I could just guess it would be pretty good because I love sweet potatoes. But it was an interesting part of the story. And to me, sweet potato stew was about eating and friendship. It was about people gathering around food and that that is a cool thing. That is a neat thing. I think that's a good opportunity for those, for, um, for anyone. Let's go on to 11. Fear is an impediment to happiness. Ooh, this is a good one. This is a good one. I think fear is essential. It's a given. We all have fear. Fear is out there. We are all afraid. Fear is part of life. It's you know, we're not going to avoid it, okay? Some of us have more fear than others. Those of us who have anxiety, like myself and many of you, we fear a lot. I fear a lot. Coming, just driving down here, I was afraid on the road, and, but I, I kept driving, and the snow was blowing sideways, and I kept driving, and the wind was blowing the other way, and trucks were, and uh, actually a truck a while back after we got past there got blown over and onto the road, and the highway was closed, and, but you keep driving. We can't let fear rule our lives. But we have to learn to live with the fear and learn to find ways to work through the fear. So fear can be an impediment to happiness. I totally get that. But to just deny that fear exists doesn't work. We have to understand fear is real. Sometimes it's justified. But when it's not, those are the chances we want to take some tools we have and try to work through them so they don't suppress that happiness, so they don't impede that happiness. I like that. Number 12, happiness is feeling completely alive. That's pretty good. I like that's pretty good. Happiness is feeling alive. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I feel pretty alive here. I'm at a retirement RV community in Mesa, Arizona, <laughs> visiting my in-laws, and I feel alive. I mean. Some people would be grinding their teeth to go spend a week with their in-laws at an RV community in a small trailer. And, you know, I've been sleeping on the floor while I've been down here because, you know, I snore sometimes and I can't always share the bed with my wife. And when I start to snore, I come down here. And so last night I was sleeping on some cushions on the floor. <laughs> and that's okay. It's okay. Okay. 
I still feel alive. And I love what I'm doing down here. And right now, boy, I was just watching some old Cheers and some part of an old movie with Queen Latifah. And I was just watching that. I thought, you know, I should record a podcast because I need to do some work while I'm down here. And what's the coolest thing is I start to talk to you and suddenly I feel 10 times better than I did just sitting there watching some TV. This is so much more fun. So, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I feel alive. Number 13, happiness is knowing how to celebrate. Ooh, celebration is good. How do you celebrate? And what are you celebrating? And can you find things to celebrate? Do you celebrate? There's the question. Do you celebrate? Do you celebrate the things, the big things, the small things in your life? Do you take the time to enjoy the good things that happen? God, I was terrible at this, and I still am sometimes. I'm so focused on my insecurities. I'm so focused on my anxiety. I'm so focused on my symptoms. I'm so focused on trying to build my, my, my podcast and build all this other stuff that's going on. But I don't always remember to stop and celebrate the things that happen. I'm down here and I'm just kind of letting things happen. I'm just doing things, you know, with my family. I'm kind of following their lead. I'm just enjoying the company. I'm trying to. I'm not saying I'm always doing that because there's times I've been grumbling and complaining and I've said it to my wife and I do that, trust me. But I'm trying to go with the flow down here and just let the things happen as much as I can and to celebrate all the good moments that happen down here and remembering to celebrate those because that's important. That's really important. Number 14, listening is loving. Ooh, this is a good one. I'm a talker. You know that from me doing a podcast right now. I'm a talker. Which often means I'm probably not as good of a listener. And I will admit that. I'm not as good of a listener. And my anxiety and my insecurities and low self-esteem and everything... I'm so focused on what I'm going to say next in a conversation. I'd always hear people, and that's the way I've been most of my life. And that's probably part of my memory problems, is I'm not always hearing what's going on. I'm not always part of all that. And I'm just, I'm just not there. I'm not in that moment. And that's not healthy. And I, I've changed some of that. I've become a better listener, especially to my wife, although I still have a long way to go, and to other people. I know that it's important to listen. I know that it's important to be there. And I'm trying to be better. But I have a lot of people in my in my life. My wife is a good listener. My buddy JB, he's a counselor. He is a born (laughs) born listener. He's great. And I'm so happy to have them in my lives and help me to understand that listening to somebody, really listening to them, not thinking of what you're gonna say next not thinking of how you're going to debate them, not thinking about what your rebuttal is or your response is. Just listening is such a gift. Is such a gift. And I'm slowly learning that one. I'm slowly learning that one. And number 15, nostalgia is not what it used to be. (laughs) We often look back at, at our lives and lives before us, and everything was so much better. I hear that a lot from you know, younger generations today saying, well, you guys had it so much better. You didn't have to worry about this, and you don't have to worry about social media and all the trolls, and you didn't have to worry about you know, AI, and you didn't have to worry about all the job situation. You know, it's like, look, our lives were not rosy either, and the lives before us were definitely not rosy. If you really knew history, you'll realize we've come a long way. And while nostalgia for what, was, what used to be is something we can cling to, it's not what is now. And it gets us nowhere. I'm nostalgia for the 70s and 80s. That's what I grew up in. I still watch those TV shows. I still watch movies from that time because I love those. And I really liked that quality. Oh, there's my phone. Hey, I'm going to wrap this up because that's probably my wife saying I'm, I need to go over. So let me wrap this up. Let me look real quick here. Yeah, I'll be part of it. Okay, she says, oh, she's heading back my way. So, yeah, she's walking back from her parents' unit back here. So I'm going to wrap this up before she gets here. 
Anyway, if we're focused on what used to be all the time and nostalgia and everything else, then we're not in the moment. We're not here now. And now is all there is. Two of the rules here were about future and the past. And neither of those are now. N none of that is right now. None of that is what we're doing now. This is all there is now. My wife's heading back there. We're probably going to get some groceries, maybe cook up some burgers tonight with her folks, play some cards. That's my now. In fact, that's not even my now. That's the future. My now is just talking to you right now, and I love it. And I love it. Those are the 15. Check out the movie if you get a chance. I'm not saying it's a great movie. I thought it was kind of fun. It could have been better, but I thought it was a good movie. I just like movies that challenge our perceptions of psychology and, and look at the human condition. And so I'm attracted to movies like that. And that's why I watched this one. Plus, I like the actor. I like Simon. I think he's good. So I, I just like watching that kind of stuff. So it's just not about the movie, but it's about the rules. And I think we can find a better way to live. And uh, hopefully, touching on those 15 for you all was an interesting journey to go through them. It was just a topic I thought would be interesting for the podcast. And I can't wait to launch these when I get back in town because we're going to be launching all these. This is episode, oh, I think 29 or 30 now. And we're going to be launching all those when I get home and I can't wait for that and then we'll be catching up and then these will be more recent but I just want to thank you so much for joining me today and being part of this episode I loved it I loved talking through it I had a blast and I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't think that somebody out there no I might still be doing it but <laughs> no I don't know I don't know and that's okay that's okay I hope you're okay I hope this finds you well. I hope this finds you finding some calm, finding some peace, finding some joy in your day. That's what I hope. Honest, honest, that's what I hope. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, this is Dee. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out our podcast. I do need to remind everyone that this podcast is for informational purposes only and should never be considered medical, psychological, or professional health advice of any kind. If you or someone you know is dealing with significant mental health issues, please seek professional help. Resources can be found in our show notes and on our website at unevenpodcast.com. Take care of yourself, and I'll catch you on the flip side.